I've been working in the field of corruption for about 15 years now, wearing different hats, and this work has taken me to many different countries in this world. And one thing may be obvious to you, and it certainly became obvious to me, um, in the course of these travels is that no matter where you go, no matter how much people earn, no matter what their political systems are, corruption is to be found everywhere. Maybe more or less blatantly, maybe in different guises, but in many ways it seems that corruption is the norm and not the exception. Um, I actually grew up in a tiny village in Switzerland. And before I go on to tell you how damaging and how corroding corruption can be, I would like to muddy the waters a bit. Because living in such a small community here in the heart of Switzerland, well, on the margins of Switzerland, actually provided me with many insights for my future work. It taught me that what may be condemned as corruption from one point of view may be viewed as trust, as a favour, as social capital, from another point of view. So, for instance, why go through time-consuming and tedious tendering processes if there is a known and trusted constructor in the neighbouring village? Why be difficult and start asking questions when the local bigwig wants to rezone some land because he would like to build another house. The costs of criticizing, the costs of raising these issues, of being difficult, are much higher than the benefits that you would get out of it. And, of course, in the back of your mind, at any time in the future, either of these guys may be doing you a, fa a favor as well. So, in this sense, corruption is indeed a way of life where personal relationships are fused with official ones, where the spirit of knowing someone counts for more than the letter of the law. Now, this quote was actually um, told to me by a Kenyan, and he was describing the realities in his home country. But these realities resonated very much with the realities that I knew from my home village, with a very small but significant difference that the Swiss routinely get outraged if anyone dares call their beloved nepotism, their Vettelewirtschaft, corruption. <laughs> Allow me to share a second quote with you. Corruption is a higher form of competition. If you think about it, in many ways, corruption is a bit like playing a game. You want to win something. You want to win a job. You want to win a license. You want to win a project. Right? So, the nicer the, pro the, nicer the presents that you give to your client, um, the greater the, the perks that you provide them with, a good bottle of wine. Tickets to a Champions League game, a lovely weekend in London, maybe with the family. The greater the chance is that they will actually feel obliged to think of you at the right um, moment. Now, much of this may not necessarily count as corruption, but where legitimate client relationships end and where illegal, outright bribery begins, is a question which more and more civil and criminal codes are addressing. The quote, in fact, comes from a Tanzanian engineer. He was describing to me the ways in which a very small and a very weak private sector um, has to be creative to deal with a very large and a very heavy public sector. But in many ways, these practices do not differ significantly from standard practices of Western companies. Now, I'm not going to start talking about FIFA here, but I am going to talk not about gifts, but about outright intentional 
um, bribing. Uh, I don't know whether any of you remember the Siemens scandal, which erupted in 2006. Siemens, I'm sure you all know, a very respectable German company, was found to have 1.3 billion euros. I will repeat that, savour it. 1.3 billion euros in slush funds, earmarked to facilitate tenders. Yes, <laughs> let that sink in just for a moment. Now, we are not talking about some, just one individual overeager regional manager overstepping some rules and regulations. No. We are talking about a systematic culture of corruption throughout the company. In Siemens's mind, these slush funds gave them the competitive edge, perhaps not, not um, illegal, but certainly a legitimate higher form of corruption. Now, what holds true on a corporate level may also hold true on a societal level. And this was brought home to me in a very disturbing way, in fact, by another Tanzanian, an architect, who was complaining very bitterly about the way that attitudes had changed in his country. And he was saying, people's attitudes are now, if you are poor, you are stupid. If you are not corrupt, you are stupid. If you have a nice position and you don't make the most of it, you are stupid. So, in a nutshell, corruption is a very big and a very powerful idea, and it drives many little things in life. But corruption also harms many little things in life. Some people are less equal than others because of corruption. They don't know the right people, they can't pull the right strings, they don't have enough money in their pockets to get what they are entitled to. And many people suffer because of this. And again, another quote from Tanzania, people survive through corruption, but they also perish through corruption. Because corruption harms many big things in life, too. On a daily basis, people die because of corruption. Patients do not get treated in hospitals because they don't have the money to pay the doctors, the nurses, the midwives. Sometimes they don't even get into the hospitals because they can't pay the guy at the registration. People get robbed, kidnapped and killed because the police are paid to look away. Schools collapse because building um, regulations are not uh, respected because the bidding process was ba based on corruption. Or schools are not even built in the first place because the funds mysteriously disappear. But if corruption, and this is my last but, nearly last, second from last but, if corruption is a powerful idea, well, so is the idea of a corruption-free world, a corruption-free country, a corruption-free village. And many things are happening. All over the world, there are initiatives um, coming up, and um, the ugly head of corruption is being unveiled. These initiatives range from international conventions, from national campaigns, from new criminal codes, whistleblowing systems, and these are all pushing and pulling to create a world which is more transparent and more accountable. But these initiatives do not just appear out of the blue. They all come from people, from individuals and from groups who have the courage to stand up and take action and to change the little things in life with the power of an idea. Thank you very much.